I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today we have a very special edition for you. Edge edition. The Edge edition. I like that. <laughs> I'm here with SuperTuber Stuart Edge, mm -hmm. and uh, this is this is gonna be a lot of fun. I know. Yeah. Welcome to Behind the Brand. Yeah. This is. A, thanks for having me in this awesome car. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I mean. <laughs> Today we're we're doing a little. Uh, I don't know. Homage. A little. A little homage, yeah. A little trip around South Orange County. Welcome to our hood. Yeah. How did you get this job? That's what I ask most people. How did I get this job? Yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of made this my job. I've always been into m making videos. Okay. Uh, but I never thought I would be able to make that a career because I was like, I don't want to have to make a video that I'm not comfortable making. Yeah. Like a very bad rated R movie. Yeah. I didn't want to have to edit a bad movie. Yeah. So I always thought it was never an option to be in a video. Um, so throughout my life, I'd always kind of shoot little videos, but I would always tell myself it's not a possibility. Nice. You didn't get my heart to stop yet. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. Um, a recurring thought that I kept having was um, that I should get into video. Okay. But I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I decided just to, to give it a shot. And when was this? So give us some context. Like this what year? This was in 2012. The okay. summer of 2012. All right. And I started making some videos. I did like a rope swing video with some friends where we just went and had fun. I would like make funny music videos. And this was all in the summer and fall of 2012. Yeah. All right? And then in December of 2012, so shortly after I, that, that I started making my own videos, I made a, mistle, uh, I made a video called The Mistletoe Kissing Prank. Okay. And it went viral. It got like 10 million views in a week. Wow. And the coolest part was that not only did it get a lot of views, but I started to get a lot of subscribers. I got 100,000 subscribers that month because of that video. Okay. So that was a very big... That's a big deal. Very big deal. Because a lot of people get viral videos, but the fact that I got subscribers, that was huge. So did you have any other videos on your channel after that, or just that one? I just had that one. I mean, I had, like I said, I had like a parody video I shot, but nothing viral. Okay. So that was the first viral video. And then after that, I started, I was like, well, people, the video that went viral was a prank, so I'm going to continue with this whole prank slash man on the street style of video. Yeah. So what have you had the most success with then? So you've done pranks, you've done yeah. magic, you've done this other kind of stuff. Well, the thing I've had the most success with is when I am just myself on my YouTube channel, yeah. where I showcase a talent or ability that I have and I turn it into a video. So who is the real Stuart Edge though? I think that's what the everyone wants to know. Edge. I'm a musician, I'm a magician, I'm a movie maker, I love inspiring people, I love, I just love wowing people. Yeah. I guess you could say the real Stuart Edge is an entertainer. Yeah. In all aspects. Uh, and so what I've been doing is just making videos uh, of all these different ways that I love to entertain. So where are you at now? You've had some success. You got yeah. some traction. Yeah. You've got subscribers. Yep. I mean, where I'm at now is kind of trying to break into that uh, mainstream media as a comedian slash host slash entertainer, right? Because I've kind of hit the ceiling as far as YouTube goes. I mean... What do you mean? Like, what is that ceiling? Well, it's, it's a very high ceiling, right? But it's like... I I feel like I've like I've got to the point where okay I've made my presence known on YouTube and now it's like where's the next step like yeah. when I first started out doing videos it's like okay I want to get a million subscribers okay I want to yep. get two million subscribers I try and always think about um, what's something first that like I want to try like what's something fun that I want to do yeah and if I was the only if I was just gonna make this video and I was the only one that was gonna see it that I would enjoy it. That's where I start. 
right? So you recently did this really cool video. I love, like, it was an homage to Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Yes. Yeah, that was cool. Thank you. Uh, you shot sure. that in New York? Yeah, I did. How did you shoot that? Walk us through, you know, the process. And, like, do you storyboard? Do you map stuff out? Do you just go yeah. for it? So for that video, I came up with that video watching Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And I actually released a video similar to that the same week that Guardians of the Galaxy came out. And I was like, when, uh, when the opening scene, when Star-Lord walks and he puts the headphones on and he's, like, dancing... I was in. I was like, oh, that. I was like, I should do a video soon where I do the exact same thing, but dressed like Star Lord. Yeah. You know what? Now that you mention it, you, like your persona, you kind of strike me as the same kind of comedian entertainer that Chris Pratt is. Thank you. Yeah. He's like understated humor, but like also yeah. a little bit goofy, but lovable, big heart. Yeah. A lot of talent. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would love. See, that's what I want to do. I want to. I want to act. I want to get into stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like we're kind of have that same personality, right? Yeah. Same with Jimmy Fallon. I feel like we kind of have the same personality. I'm a huge fan of Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. I love what he's doing. Yeah. He just seems to be having so much fun on his show, right? Yeah. And I have a lot of fun in my YouTube videos, so. Oh. Anyway, the so this Guardians of the Galaxy video, I had it planned for a while, and finally we got to the time when it was time to shoot, and I reached out to a friend of mine, Aaron Sorensen. Okay. And... I just said, you know, here's the idea I have for this video, and then we kind of we storyboarded a little bit. We never we didn't write anything down, but we kind of pitched our ideas of what would be a really cool way to tell this yeah. story. And that's kind of how we came up with the uh, idea for how to shoot that video. Well, how long did that take you? Was that a day, a week, a month? Of figure. Well, the whole process took about four, like well, four to six months of like developing the idea in my brain and like yeah. figuring out how we were going to logistically shoot it and the costume yeah so it was well thought out yeah, it wasn't it just was. like a spur of the moment thing yes okay exactly gotcha and then so then you get to New York you're there did you yeah. get a good reception were people uh, yeah so I I had done a video previous I had done a video just like that uh, a few months ago and so I kind of knew what it was like to shoot this style of video where you're awkwardly dancing behind people. Yeah. And so I kind of knew everything I needed to do. Yeah. So you had the model, you had the template. Yeah. Yep. I kind of knew locations, certain locations that I wanted to go to. And it was, it was still a little bit difficult. I mean, I was still afraid that like we weren't going to get the shots that we needed to, right? Yeah. And that's happened to me before. Like... I shot a video here in, uh, in in Westwood, LA. Okay. And we shot it, and we spent a whole day filming. We like paid for the trip out here, and when we got back to Utah, I was looking at the footage. And was like, ah, oh, this isn't. It's not enough. We need more. So yeah. we went back. Okay. We drove all the way back to California. Okay. The next weekend. So sometimes these more. things are a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And- it's not always, you know, doesn't always work on the first try. Yep. Okay. What advice would you give to people who want to be content creators, who want to produce original content? You know, if people are just getting started. Yeah. Um, work hard, um, but also be patient. Like, uh, it's it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to kind of get in a rut. Uh, and be be okay with that. I some of the best musicians and uh, well, some of the best musicians and entertainers they kind of do things in seasons and breaks. You know, they go yeah. on. They're not constantly touring. Yeah. They go on a tour and then they wait three years so they tour again. Yeah. And they go back and they go back to the drawing board and they try new yeah. things. Like you're doing a lot of magic right now. In fact, we're, yeah. we're pulling up. Uh, to the college here, you're gonna experiment with some of yes. your magic, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go really slow over these speed bumps because cool. this car is like. You hit them at an angle too. Be the... Yeah. Oh, there we go. Cool. But yeah, I think one thing I've realized is it's okay to take to have those. It's okay to have those moments when you're in a rut. Yeah. Or you're lazy. Okay. You know. It, don't beat yourself up when those times happen because all it takes is 
one really good breakout video. Yeah. But if you get so worked up about those, the times that you're not doing successfully, you're going to be so focused on that and you're just, it's kind of like you're trying to just like always treading water, you know? Yeah. But it's okay. Like take a little break, relax, and then you'll have the energy. So how do you measure success then? I mean, yeah. subscribers is great. View count is great. Yeah. What do you do if you create awesome content and there's just crickets? So it's, it's different for everybody. You really determine what you want to do to be successful. Yeah. And you just got to know, like, this is what I want to do and that'll determine my success. So how do you measure? How does Stuart how do, Edge, though, measure it? Okay. How do I measure success? Uh, so right now I'm trying to reach mainstream audiences. Okay. And so that is how I view success. If I am tapping into that mainstream audience, yeah. then I'm being successful. Because that's my goal. That's where I want to get to someday. So you were on Jimmy Fallon, right? I mean, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. How so? It, it was awesome to be on that show. And it's a huge credibility. Like People say, it's like, whoa, you were on Jimmy Fallon. But at the same time, it's always like, now, that's people always reference that. And it's like, it's something that I have to see. Okay, well, I was on Jimmy Fallon how am I doing now? Because I was Jimmy Fallon on, I was on the Jimmy Fallon show two years ago. Okay. And so people always bring it back up. So and you're really only as good as your last at bat. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so I, in fact, I would tell myself that when I first started making videos. I said, I'm only as good as my next video. Not saying that or not discrediting or discounting the videos that I did in the past. But I told myself so that I didn't get lazy because I was having a lot of success. And if I was like, ah, oh, cool, well, I mean, those videos in the past, they were great. If I told myself that, I would get lazy. So I always told myself, I'm only as good as my next video. Um, so yeah, the Jimmy Fallon thing, it was amazing. And it uh, was definitely a big uh, like seal of approval. You know, okay. Stewart Edge channel, what I'm doing. But since I was on Jimmy Fallon, I've created content that's so much better, in my opinion, than what I had created in the past. And so it's kind of like, oh, I need that next seal of approval. So you're always trying to notch up. You're leveling up. Exactly. But so now what I've been doing is trying to get back into magic. So in the month of May, I'm going to do uh, month of magic. It's the May month of magic. And I'm going to be doing some of the coolest magic tricks that I know that I've created as well as some of the coolest magic tricks that I've seen other people do. So where do you go to learn magic? I mean, is there, you have a handbook or you yeah. go online or how do you learn these tricks? Or well, can you even tell us? Yeah, I'm, well, so I view magic different. Like, I don't view magic as, as magic. I just view it as entertaining. Okay. The best entertainers, when they, when you watch them, you leave with the same feeling you left when you left a magic show, right? That, oh, wow. Yeah. And so, when I do performing, like, I guess I want to say, when I do magic, I don't just think, ooh, it has to be magic. It's just like, I want to wow you in any way. So, I think, how can I wow you in, in any way? And but where do you go to learn magic in the first place? Like, yeah. is there a magic shop or is there a book or go online or do you train with like Houdini? Well, or? it's it's the same. It's the same way. Like, how does a musician write a hit song? You just have to think about it. And okay. But like, you must have basic, you know. Yeah. Uh, what do they call it? A sleight of hand or yeah. all that basic down before you attempt something else. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like you just have to think. So. I did this trick called Signed Card Through Glass yeah. uh, about two years ago. I and, saw that. It's a video, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how I saw... I saw some, I saw a YouTube video of somebody do that. And... Yeah. So I saw a video of somebody doing the trick where they had somebody sign a card and they threw it at a window and it was on the opposite side of the window. Yeah. And I was like, that is a very cool trick. I'm like... I don't know how to do that. I'm like, what's the only possible way that trick could be done? 
And then I had to think. I was like, okay, well, this is the only way it could be done, and blah, blah, blah. This is, and then I was like, okay, that's how I have to do the trick. But so you, magic, all it is, is just figuring out, you want something to happen. You want your shirt to change colors. You want a, a card to be on the opposite side of the glass. You want to make a card disappear. What's the only physical way that you can make that happen? And then you figure out, then maybe the first idea you come up with is very long and tedious and so yeah. then you're just going through and you're like wait I still can't get my head around this so is magic really a derivative of a baseline of tricks you know like to be able to hide things with your hand or hide things with your body and then they're just derivatives of that same base I mean you have to have a base you can't just say I want card to appear on the other side of the glass why not <laughs> well, I just can't get my head around that but help me understand like is there a base uh amount of magic knowledge you have to have in order to pull something like that off or you just imagine how it's done the kid who teaches himself how to ride a bike might learn more things about himself and about other aspects of riding a bike than the kid that just like watched a video on how to ride a bike and did exactly the way it was taught you know? sure let's talk a little bit about failure okay it's the thing that gets a lot of people stuck mm-hmm. you know they they have a passion or they have a talent for something and maybe they're, I don't know, they're not having the success that they want and then they just give up. Has there been a point where you felt like this thing's not working and I just got to cut bait, do something else, get a real job? Yeah. Uh, over the past six or seven months, I've been feeling that way. Really? Because my views have gone down a lot on my channel uh, and so I felt like, you know, I'm just not relative anymore. Wow. Although the videos that I've been putting out, I feel like are my most creative videos. And at some point, sometimes I think, man, if I would have done these videos a year and a half ago when I was super hot on like on the trends, I would be the biggest thing in the entertainment industry right now. Well, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. So why do you think your video views are going down? I don't know. I Is... think, well, I'm not sure. I... I don't know. I think there could be a couple of reasons. Maybe I wasn't as consistent with uploading. Um, I don't. I don't really know. Um, yeah. But I'm very glad that I've had this experience because I've been able to know, see the difference of being super hot on the trends. Like the f- first year, almost every video I did like got on the front page of YouTube, got trending, got over a million hits in a week, and then things just kind of s- s- slowed down since then. Yeah. So you want to go a little bit faster? You see this? Yeah. Let's let's uh, experiment with this real s- the speed of this puppy. Oh, wow. How's that feel? That was on normal. Yeah, I did not even barely press down on the gas on that. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's normal. Oh, yeah. I barely pushed down on the gas. What happens if you... If you floor it? Yeah. I think it takes off, like, in the air. It's, we start flying. Oh, okay. <laughs> we should experiment on that. We should, huh? Yeah. You know, the best people are created. That's right. Let's get over here. We'll try that. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully no police either. I bet if you turn it on sport mode, it wouldn't do that lag at the beginning. It would right. just it would just go straight into. We'll have to try that. Yeah. Wow. Do you get a lot of flack from family and friends who, in the beginning, maybe don't understand, or even maybe even right now? No. Well, do. I may have. I I don't think so. I I think everybody has always been very supportive of what I do. It's it's fun. Like, it's just what I... It's, like, who I am, you know? So I feel like people enjoy it. 
But you never had anyone say get a real job or the pressure to. I mean, I think. I think. Uh, let me think if someone has said that. Yeah. Uh, yes. No. I, yeah. At the very beginning, there were a few people that were like, oh, like, how are you going to make this work? But then as I started making it work, then people noticed. People were glad. But I never was the one that was like, oh, my family doesn't think I'm going to be able to. My family thinks I'm not going to be able to do this. So I that's hurting my self-esteem. It was never that way. I was just like, no, I'm doing this. So you didn't let any of that block me? No, no. Because I think that does stop a lot of people. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's... People will sh- shame you into uh, going the yeah. sure path or what they think is the sure path. For, sure me, yeah. For me, the biggest obstacle has been myself. It's never been other people telling me not to do things. It's, it's been myself. It's been confidence in what I'm doing. Uh, it's been, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of just been confidence in what I'm doing. So that's the biggest obstacle I've had. As an entrepreneur, yeah, I agree. I find myself sometimes doubting what I'm doing uh, and wondering if what I'm doing, like people are gonna like it or if I'm going to like it. I think a lot about the future. I'm like, ah, like this isn't gonna be working. So what I've done is going, um, so what I've done to kind of get over that is looking at the stuff that has been successful and just kind of going down that same path again yeah and then you'll you'll uh, figure it out again yeah not everybody is successful their entire life yeah it may it may look like that but what that person that person whoever think of a very successful person and elon musk i don't know who that is elon musk uh he started co-founder of paypal oh then he went on to tesla motors you know the power okay. electric cars and now he's doing spacex okay let's think of someone that's like more like young so think of somebody like Taylor Swift Taylor Swift okay we're looking for the audience right we're sure keeping the audience in mind keeping it real okay? like, <laughs> I'm a fan of she's a, yeah I'm sure she so she, you look at her life and she's like oh success right yeah. tons of it super rich and we just think it's a bunch of success but I feel like at times that where she thinks like oh like what's the next step going to be, you know, in that battle where you're trying to figure things out. Um, so, and then Elon Musk, right? Yeah. Same thing. Like he, there are times where you're not sure what you're doing, but you just kind of got to slowly go at it. Well, he's done lots of things and he's pivoted and he's tried, I mean, yeah, there's no one has done things as diverse and successful as Elon, right? Like yeah. from PayPal to Tesla Motors to SpaceX. Yeah. You know, he wants to, to do big things. He wants to build a, uh, a train mm-hmm. from here to San Francisco, even Southern California, to Northern California. That's yeah. sweet. I think a lot of people always ask me, like, oh, like, how do I make this video happen? Like, how do I do this? And, or they're like, hey, can you, like, 
help me get this video started? Can you do this for me? Yeah. And I think, well, the first, your first problem is that you're coming to me right now. Right, right, right. Like, and asking me, like, a lot of times, like, the best people just go out and make things happen. Right. At, then while they're doing that, while they're making that happen, they're asking. Yeah. You know, they start, they go. So your advice is to be a self-starter, to get it done first, and then start looking outward for exactly. possible collaboration. Exactly. And sometimes you just have to do things on your own, yeah. and it's going to, it'll, it'll work out. Like, sometimes people wait too much for other people. Yes. Yeah, so I was going to say, I had that problem in the beginning, you know, when I was, I worked for the studios, and, you know, went to college, got a real job, Yeah. thought... What I realized was I was waiting to get picked. Yeah. And it's tough. You know, sometimes you do get picked, but, you know, sometimes you don't. Like when I was in elementary school, I was one of the shortest kids. And yeah. I loved basketball, but I, I always got picked last. And sometimes I didn't get picked on the team because I was the shortest. Yeah. And nowadays, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good stuff. If you wait to get picked, it may not ever happen. Yeah. You gotta make it happen yourself. Yep. I got some really great advice. I got two pieces of really great advice. Yeah. I know you're a Star Wars fan, so this might be controversial. So, Seth Godin, who's an author, one of my favorite authors, he said to me, Brian, Yoda is wrong. Yes. Mind blown, right? Yeah. He <laughs> said, you know, Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. Yeah. He says, I think that's totally wrong. There is a try. Yeah. Try is the opposite of hiding. Mm -hmm. And so if you just try stuff that might not work, Eventually, as long as you don't fail too far in order to come back and play another day, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. So really, it is the people who are trying their best that win. It's a last man standing contest, right? Yeah. So this is Laguna Beach. We're on Laguna Canyon Road right now. This is a very famous yeah. kind of scenic and epic drive. Nice. Very beautiful. Nice. I like it. Someone that I think does a very good job that I look up to is Lindsay Sterling. You know Lindsay Sterling? Yeah, uh, violin player. Yeah. Yeah. She's cute. <laughs> and she's good at what she does. So what do you think makes her good? Um, I think she just works hard. Uh, I, yeah, she just works really hard. Um, and she is good at like not viewing it too much as a business, you know, she like, I mean, she views it as a business, but like, she, I just was like going through her Facebook page and like looking at a bunch of photos and I just kept going and looking because it was so intriguing. Like everything she posted was fun and it was like her life. Yeah. And so Very I think that's, personal. yeah. So you, you, as an, you need to figure out what you want to do. Like, do you want to be a personality? If you want to be a personality, then make sure you have a personality in your videos. Yeah, but that's actually a really good point is, yeah. you know, with social media, and I know you're, you're, turn up the volume on like Snapchat. Yeah. And so this is like a chance for your audience really to um, see the personal side of you, right? Yeah. And I think this is great. This is what social media is about. It's about giving people not only a glimpse, but like, you know, even with apps like Periscope right now that are hot doing live streaming. It's yeah. It's for people to basically be a along the journey with you mm -hmm. and not even be physically there, right? Yeah. How important that is, how important is that to you now and going forward? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Like how much do you show your fans and how much is kind of like you show them what you want them to see? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I do okay at that. I think I could do a lot better. The thing that I just love the most is making a really good video. Yeah. Like one of the like a two or three minute video. I love putting stuff on my main YouTube channel. You could call it right. Yeah. I've got so many. I've got the Snapchat and all that stuff. But what I love to do the most is making a really cool video. Gotcha. And I've kind of had to like. And I think I need to embrace that more because for a while I was like, oh, I need to push on Snapchat, Instagram, and all that stuff. But. The thing I love to do the most is making videos yeah. and putting them on YouTube. Yeah. And so I think what I need to do is I need to embrace that more. And because if I put all of my passion into that, that's where people will 
experience so, the most. So YouTube is where you've got your biggest audience, where you've got yeah. the most traction. And I felt for a little bit what I was doing is I got this huge audience on YouTube. And then I was like, oh, now you guys are all following me here, but go follow me over here now. And it's like, it didn't make sense. And so what I'm realizing now, and I think that might have been the part where I kind of started slowing down. Because I told people, it's like, now go follow me over here. And I was like restarting what I was doing. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm doing now is I'm getting back into YouTube. Just like putting all of my, my best ideas and everything I do back onto my YouTube channel. Um, Stuart, let's get a little bit personal. Yes. So, talk about some of your. Uh, I'm a McLaren. I mean, <laughs> we should, right? Yeah. What are what's some of your personal aspirations? Like, what do you? You know, you're a young man. Are you single? Yeah. You seen anybody? Yeah. Talk to, talk about yeah. your uh, your personal life a little bit. Yeah. I'm single. Uh, I have been. I mean, I date though. I. I want a family. Yeah. I think a family would be awesome, yeah. And so that's kind of, really, that's my, one of my main goals, always, aside from work, is like, well, in front of work. Right. Uh, it's, it's a uh, get married, you know, start a family. We would have the coolest family, me and my wife, whoever it is. Yeah, what kind of, what kind of girl do you date? You date someone who's funny, do you date someone who's outgoing? Mm -hmm. Like, what are some things that you like to yeah. do outside of making videos, music, and, yeah. and magic? Uh, well, I, that's what I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> so you like a girl who does the same kind of stuff? Yeah, well, I just, I'm into girls that are, like, very creative, you know? That are funny. And uh, that are witty. I like that. Uh, because it, 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 it's, it's, it's a good duo for me. You know? Yeah. So you crack jokes, or you? Yeah, but I also like, like, I I like to keep everything I do very clean. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm not. I, you got high standards. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But I don't want. I don't say that in a way of like, if you don't have high standards, you're a bad person. I. What I like to do is, uh, I just yeah, I love to keep it clean, and everything. So I like to find. A big, kind of a big turnoff is for, for me is when somebody like is not clean with like their jokes, the yeah. inappropriate humor and stuff. So you want someone with the same standards? Yeah, exactly. I gotcha. How well do you get along with some of these other YouTubers? Um, I don't collaborate a lot. Why uh, is that? I don't know. You don't get invited or? Uh... Um, well, I just, I just. I don't. I live in Utah. I mean, there's a lot of town in Utah, though, right? Yeah, there is, but I just don't. I don't know. I just don't. I should, but um, I think it's right now. I'm really focusing on like building myself up. Something I need to do more though is collaborating with people. So talk about the value of that. I mean, what does it mean to collaborate and? Yeah. Who would you like to collaborate with? Maybe even they're not, not a YouTuber. Maybe it's a musician or yeah. a magician. Yeah. Uh, again, I think I just I want to collaborate with people that have really big audiences. You know? Okay. Uh, audiences outside of YouTube. Like uh, who? Give me a name. Like uh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift would be awesome. I've got a perfect idea to do with Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it a secret, or can you uh, share? Yeah, I mean, it's kind. Of, I mean, I'd love to just go sing with her, like yeah. serenade people. I think Who would not? Funny. Yeah, right. I think it'd be funny. Um, and so it's like I've got all these cool ideas that are really good, but it's like I gotta, you know, I gotta contact these people. You know? Yeah. So how do you reach out? I mean, you reach out via social media. Do you find their manager or? Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Tweet them. Email them. Uh, go to where they are and meet them and tell them. Uh, yeah. One thing I have seen though is if you if you make some make a video or make something that like gets their attention, you know? And right. just uh, that's that's the best way to do it. So how how has that worked for you in the past? 
like getting someone's attention. Didn't you? I think you said somewhere on like the Carly Rae Jepsen just tweeted our last video, which was cool. So like we have her attention now, but it's, cool. it's like cool. I'd love to do something with you now, Carly. It's like let's do that. So really, the way I kind of see things is like if I just make myself the biggest I possibly can, things will open up for me. How about on the movie side? Like, who would you like to collaborate with? Um, I'd love to do something with Chris Pratt. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would love to do something with him. So you got a shout-out, right, when you did that video, yeah. Guardians of New York? Yeah, Guardians of NYC. That's pretty sweet. And did the yeah. director hit you up, too? Uh, yeah, he saw that. And so it's like, in my mind, it's like, cool, like, I got a tweet from him, but it's like, how do I get to the next level? Like, how do we do... How do you connect the dots? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. You're getting on the radar, but you've got to really put it together yeah, and take it to the next level. Like, yeah. It's like, cool, you tweeted me. Yeah. And now it's like, why don't you come over to my place? Right. Like, hang out. That kid is cool, but then what? Yeah. I got you. So you're you're ready to take it to the next level. Uh, yeah, exactly. But you're still, you're, you are still trying to figure it out. Yep. I'm trying okay. to be an entrepreneur. Going out on the edge. Gotcha. <laughs> Well, what advice do you give people about fame? You know, like, people approach yeah. you now. People know your face, know your name. Yeah. Um, what would you say about fame? Like... People who want to be famous. Yeah. I mean, fame is a weird thing. I... I like to be in control, and when the more fame you get, the more recognition you get, is like the less in control you are sometimes. So I go on the street, and I'm nowhere near like a Taylor Swift or Justin Bieber. Sure. You know, but it's like, it is a little crazy, because I go on the street kind of wanting to do my own thing, and then just people will like stop you, and you're, working, you're not ready for that, and you're not prepared. What would you say to some of these kids, though, who are clearly, you know, after fame and fortune, you know, that's like... That's how they're trying to do their thing, right? It's it's not about the content or the quality first. It's yeah. really about becoming famous. Yeah. You can get famous if you want to. Anybody can. So this is one of my favorite spots. Mm -hmm. It's kind of quiet, out of the way. Uh, this is a good combo. I, this is yeah. the interesting stuff to me. Yeah. Uh, so I read this great book by Susan Cain. Yeah. She has a TED Talk, um, and she wrote this book called Quiet. It's a book for introverts, really, and extroverts. Yeah. Have you heard of it? No. Yeah, it's called Quiet, How to like, Break Through the Noise in a World That Can't Stop Talking. Mm -hmm. And the most interesting thing in it, I thought, is the way she defined introverts and extroverts. Basically, she said that there's a lot of classic introverts that you might think are not. President Obama, for example, is, a, is an introvert. Mm -hmm. And the thing about introverts is they really, um, you know, they're able to turn a switch on and mm -hmm. be on, like on stage or on camera or do their shtick, you know? Yeah. But like the buzz of the crowd or the excitement or whatever, it, it like sucks the energy right out of them. Yeah. So that at the end or even halfway through, they're like, I'm just done. I'm just so completely drained. Yeah. They have got to go back and be alone and then recharge. Yeah. Versus the extrovert who feeds off of that energy. Yeah. And it's exactly what they need to keep going. And so extroverts, you know, they need to be the life of the party because they feed off that energy. And otherwise, it's like the shark. If it doesn't swim, yeah. it dies, right? Yeah. Um, and then she, she says that there's hybrids, you know, people who are a little bit this, a little bit that. And so it's just, I thought it was really insightful. Yeah. I think I used to be an extrovert. I, th I think, did she say anything about that? Like how you can change, people can change? For sure. Yeah, because I think before I was very extroverted. Like I'd love being the attention. And I, feed up, I fed off of that. But now it's like you get so much attention. Now you like don't want it. And it's almost like conditioning. Imagine it, like, imagine all the time people just always telling you how good you are and always giving, like, that stimulation that we all search for, like, why we post on Facebook for that stimulation of having somebody like our post and be like, oh, imagine just constantly getting that yeah, all the time. Even when you don't ask for it and you don't want it, like, constantly getting it, that's, like, what my life is like. And so it's kind of like, now it's, like, weird, you know, I don't know what to to do. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, should we head get some food? Let's do it. I'm getting hungry. I'm starving, yeah.
my body, my brain is. Oh, I can show you a magic trick. Is that is that a coin? Yeah. Okay. This is an oldie, but a goodie. Ready for this? Okay, just yeah. just blow on this a little bit. Yeah. You don't mind if I lose this, right? Yeah. I'll try. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Yeah. You guys see, see that? <laughs> it's gone. It's on your head. That's right. You <laughs> How about this one? You like, this is a good one too. Sometimes it's difficult to get metal through the flesh, but it yeah. can be done. You know, if you if you're good and you're fast. Did you see that? Yes, I did. That's awesome. Not bad, right? Yeah. Very nice. Have you done this one? Or you take it? That's cool. Yeah. Jeez. Oh dang. That's what didn't work. Yeah. I'm ready for some food. Let's go get some food. Like... Alright, we've been spending a little time with YouTuber, magician, musician, and entertainer Stuart Edge. And we're having tacos in a supercar, McLaren 650S. Uh, it's been a great day. Thanks for watching.